is Frank Latois. Then it is Nathan Wenzo in 25th, Mikey Flynn, Max Zackham, and here they come, looking for the green. Austin Beers' truck broke down on the way to the racetrack, but now he is trucking at the front of the field, drifting to the outside, losing about six spots on the racetrack, if not more, is car number 99 for Richard Savory. The voice of Seacock Speedway joining me here at Broadcast Central, one of the best in the business, Kevin Boucher. Jake Johnson, I think, is the guy to watch in these early laps of this event. He really is. He's got the car running well. It's a new power plant for him here tonight after uh, expiring it at Stafford earlier, making his first tri Monaco Ford tri-track race, and already he's looking to the inside of Austin Beers. You've got Kyle Bonson, you're setting the pace now with a battle for second. And while that is happening, all of a sudden we see car number 50 for Sammy Raymond, and like a man with a surgical knife in his hand, coming to the front of the field is car number 60, and that is Matt Hirschman. They race side. Car number three is off the pace at the back of the field, Kevin. Yeah, Narducci trying to hang on to that, but look at the line that Sam Raymond is running, coming off the corner. He's keeping that car lower than anybody else, especially yes, yeah. off of turn four, and right now he is battling Finally get a run to the inside of Ron Silk as Austin Beers starts to backslide on the top side. Austin Beers is a young, talented driver, three generations. Grandfather drove at the old Dorney Park. Dad drove in the Ruler Modified Tour at New Salerno, won championships, and even won races in Bowler's car at this very racetrack. The kid has got talent, and he is showing that just now. There is a gaggle of cars just out of the top seven, and that seems to be where the action is going to soon become, and Matt Swanson is in that pack of cars, car number 25. Working the outside right now of Ronnie Williams as they come off at turn number two, running right behind the 55 of Ryan Doucette and the 13 of Austin Beers. And while we're looking down there, up comes Sam Ramo down to the inside of Ronnie Silk, trying to get that one down low. Sam and Waymo have matured more than any other driver in the field. There was a time when he was considered a little too aggressive. That is not the case. He's driving with a great deal of finesse, and that 50 team in operation, they have had some of the winningest cars over the year. We've seen Ronnie Silk winning with those 50 cars here on many an occasion. Yeah, we really have, and there's no doubt that Bob Horn and that whole team knows how to put a car together to run this racetrack, and Ramo was doing a fantastic job early on. 15 laps up on the board this time. The battle is for third. Ramo and Silk side by side behind them. Doug Kobe and Matt Hirschman. Doug Kobe is kind of becoming the pick in this one because Matt Hirschman is going wherever Doug Kobe goes. Now, Kobe, this is his race car. This is not the car that he runs for Tom Baldwin Jr. Mayhew Tools was his longtime associate sponsor out of Greenfield, Massachusetts. They manufacture and build chisels and drifts for just about every major company that there is, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever the case may be. Right now, it is Kobe who's chiseling his way to the front of the field. Richard Savory dropped off the pace early with that white number 99. He was fast in practice, fast in qualifying, and I don't know, it appears that he is struggling just a bit now. He really is. He's fallen out of the uh, top eight, running ninth right now, just in front of early leader Austin Beers. He follows Matt Swanson down the front straightaway, trying to get the car. That could be a ploy, though. It might be. He knows this race. He knows this track. He knows he needs the car for the second half of this race. So he may be laying back, letting the race come to him. And you know, as you look back a little into the field in this one, you've got some other great battles that are also taking place. So, while our leader still remains, Kyle Bonsignor, Jake Johnson is nipping at his heels, the hometown favorite, the Lens, the propane, plus machine. 
and Ronnie Silk. Now Silk, even though he's a little different style of a driver than Matt Hirschman is, he is a driver that knows how to get around Seacock Speedway better than most. Look a little further back, Mucha Charo and the number 51 car, and that of course is Cipriano. They have been side by side for several laps, but they are not in the front pack of cars. They are running in the 15th, 16th, and 17th position. And 25 laps up on the board. Racing each other like they're running for the win, though. They continue to push hard, and Cipriano jumps out front there. We've got a change of lead as Jake Johnson has gotten by Kyle Bonsignor and Johnson, the Rehoboth leader, sucks the pace down into three and four by a half a car length down off the corner, and lap number 28 is up on the board. You know, we talked about it. We almost called it on cue, and once he is in command, he, oh, trouble out. We got the 24 machine going around, and involved is the Mars, the uh, La 12 car, and the we're winding them up tight. Monaco Ford, Tritac action. And all of a sudden, problems on the 76 of Kirk Alexander. Goes up in smoke like a Cheech and Chong movie. And I'm not sure if that was out of the exhaust or if he may have had a see what happens here. It's a Bristol Toyota pace truck pulls down to the center of the infield. Johnson and Bonsignor wind it up off of turn number four. We're back underway and a drag race out of turn one and two. Sees Johnson set the pace. Sammy Ramo down to the inside filling the hole. Sammy Ramo did the smartest move he could. He lined up his car. The inside lane moved into second. I told you, this kid Ramo's got a very bright future in this business as well. Meanwhile, Bonsignor keeps digging on the outside, and Jake Johnson, once he took back that lead, now he's going to bring that car down the lane, Kevin, if he's going to guard that inside lane, because we see that Sammy Ramos got a car that runs on the bottom. And when we say the bottom, we're talking about a bottom lane that not many other drivers are running. And look at the one Bonsignor has on the outside. He's gotten back by Sammy Ramo up into the second spot, right on Jake Johnson's back bumper. And here comes Matt Swanson. Matt Swanson, Gary Casella, one of the two veteran modified car owners. Molly, his lifetime friend. And then to the outsider at 25 and a bid for the fifth spot, Ronnie Silk is coming back to the front, like the old hot knife through butter. Then there's a good side-by-side -side battle between David Arun, the 75 car, and the number 50 car of Ronnie Williams. Yeah, they're racing side-by-side, -side. now nose to tail as Arun gets that spot in. Arun has really done a nice job working his way through the field up into that seventh spot. Now he sits just behind that battle from third on back as they are stacked up. Ronnie Williams, on, uh, Matt Swanson on the inside of Matt Hirschman, Doug Kobe on the inside of Ron Silk, right behind Sam Ramo as they come off of turn number two. And when they hit the stroke this time, it'll be lap 38. Well, as they work their magic back to the line, little chrome horn action there. But third is now, still again, Sammy Ramo. But then in the fourth and the fifth position, Matt Swanson, Matt Hirschman. No one's giving up an inch in that battle. Swanson is actually gaining on it. He has moved into the fourth spot. And now, Matt Hirschman's going to change his line rather drastically. Behind him is still Doug Kobe, but it's Ronnie Silk and David LaRue, another very smooth and talented driver coming to the front of this field. Remember, he started this event not in the front pack of cars in 23rd position. So while Matt Hirschman has changed his line down to the inside, Doug Kobe is peeking to the outside to try to make a run. He's got Ronnie Silk behind him and kind of reminiscent of what we saw a couple of weeks ago 
when the NASCAR wheel modified one over right here, those two teamed up and picked off cars one by one up on the outside. It looks like they're trying to line up and do it again. It certainly does, and it seems to be working as they're setting their strategy together. Now we look at the bottom of the top ten. Another car that is moving forward is Rob Murphy. He's into the 12th spot. And in the 11th spot is the 06 of Les Hinkley. Now Murphy is uh, smoothly working his way up through the field as he has gotten by the 50 of Carl Medeiros Jr. Another car trying to work their way through is, not, is uh, Brian Narducci in the number yeah. three in the 88 of Woody Pitcat. Remember, they put it just a little while ago. You know, it wasn't long ago that Brian Narducci was struggling at the back of the field. Trouble out. He makes contact with Woody Pitcat in the Doug Dunleavy car. Car number 88 will bring out the second caution of the event, or the third caution of the event. Woody Pitcat in the Doug Dunleavy truck and trailers, Kenyon Lawn Care, Mike Holmes excavating car. You know, very interesting story. A year ago, that was the team and the car to beat, by the way. In the open, we're coming to the halfway as they make their presence known. Jake Johnson does it again. But all of a sudden, still nipping at the heels, Sammy Ramo. Ramo, what a good run on the bottom of the racetrack. Sammy Ramo puts it to the inside. Jake Johnson, white car versus black. Off turn number four. Down to the strike they come. Sammy Ramo becomes the brand new leader. Kevin, almost three wide, we've got a spin. Big trouble as the 0-7 gets sideways in front of the field, and several cars involved. It looks like the 16 of Silk, the 10 of Kobe, both involved there. I'll make that David Root rounds out the top five, looking for the green. Ronnie Williams is sixth, and Remo gets a good jump over Johnson, and here comes Hirschman to fill in down inside. I think Hirschman has been playing possum just a bit. Halfway down and halfway to go. But now all of a sudden, he's taken a sip of one of those energy drinks and he has now come to life. While that is happening, shuffling back to the third position is Jake Johnson. And Matty Swanson, he's in the comfort zone in the fourth spot and now David Aru is trying to shake off Joey Cipriano. And Joey, Joey having a good run up on the outside as they hit turns one and two down the back stretch. Austin Beers has come back to life. And the number 99 also is right there for Richard Savory. Savory's had an up and down night, but more ups than downs as they come back off turn number four. Good side-by-side -side racing. Brian Narducci is stuck in the 13th and the 14th position. Rudy Pitcat is right there with the Doug Dunleavy car. Let's go back up front, Kevin, and look at that battle for the fifth spot. Uh, Root and Cipriano can still racing side by side, but all of a sudden, we haven't mentioned them much. Joe Mooch in that red 47, looking the other three wide through the corner. Austin Beers diving underneath the Root and Cipriano, making it three wide. They settle it in, and Root's got the spot. Beers up to that second run in that group. Here comes Savory now. He says, if those youngsters can do it, why can't I? He moves in, makes a little bit of a contact there, and now he picks up a spot. David Aruth back to the top five. Austin Beers in the sixth spot. Savory up to seventh. Ryan Doucette turning some heads in the eighth spot. Joey Cipriano is ninth. Jerry Muchacharo in the 10th position, and Woody Pitcat, after being spun earlier, is just now out of the top 10. And we've got a change of position for fifth. Austin Beers takes that spot away. Richard Savory right behind him, working that bottom lane on a route as they come down the back straightaway. 
a route working that top side, the red, white, and blue number 75, and Savory in that white and powder blue 99 on the inside. Savory could, tries to work his magic, tries to kind of intimidate David Root, but there's no intimidation there. And then it's Doucette, the youngster. He's staying with the big dogs, and now it looks like Savory might have been able to inch ahead of David Aru. And he does up into the sixth spot, this time by 65 laps are complete, and Ramo sets a pace. Matt Hirschman sitting right there behind, waiting to pounce, while Johnson has not gone away. He continues to sit on Hirschman's tail as they come off the turn four. Yes, it, it is appears that he is just sitting there waiting for the curtain call. What do we mean by the curtain call? When they're showing the final credits, he will be a factor. It's guaranteed, there's no doubt in reference to that. Ryan DeSell up to the eighth spot now. Joey Cipriano is ninth, Woody Pitcott is 10th, and Doug Colby has worked his way from going to the pits, having to work on his race car, and Doug Colby is in the 11th spot. Joey Duchachar turning some heads as an independent runner in the 12th position. Good for him. Brian Narducci is 13th, and the car is 13th. One car round off of turn three, and I believe that is a zero two of Paul LaPlante that's going around over there, the North Attleboro native. Sammy Reno and Jake Johnson on the front row. Matt Hirschman and Matt Swanson, row number two, looking for the green, and we're back underway off of turn four. Sammy Ramos gets on the gas early and quick. Johnson takes it in at a time. Ramo digs back in. Matty Swanson goes from the outside to the inside. But while that's been happening, no one is giving an inch in the battle for the lead. No, Ramo now able to edge out. But look at Johnson try the crossover move. But the way Ramo was running that inside lane, there's no room to get under him except right here. Got a little run. Ramo a little bit loose. And look at Swanson look for second. Told you Matty Swanson was not going to give up without a fight. And who's watching all of that in the fourth spot? It is Matt Hirschman. Behind him, Austin Beers back up to the top five. Savory in the sixth spot. No! He's got a brand new leader again. Uh, Sammy came off at turn two and got all sorts of cross stop as he and Jake Johnson were racing for position and Swanson just took right advantage. Ramo drifts up the racetrack. Johnson gets by. Here comes Austin Beers looking for third. Certainly is. The foul oh, trouble now. Ramo gets into the back of Johnson, but we got problems here in the front straightaway. Yeah. Four cars involved. You've got Carl Medeiros. You've got the 47 of Joey Muchicharo, the 3 of Narducci, and the 24 of Flynn all together. And Richard Savory in row number 2. Woody Pitcat, Doug Colby, 5th and 6th, looking for the green off of 4. There it is up in the air. Swanson and Hirschman racing wheel to wheel down into turn number 1. It's like two bulls that have just seen the red flag. In this case, it's two red race cars. It's not a red flag, it's a green flag. Meanwhile, Matt Swanson still in command. Hirschman settling in for second, and here comes Richard Savory. Savory continues to dig hard in the upper lane. Austin Beers sees opportunity down underneath Matt Hirschman. They live on the same street, one driveway apart. They call it Mud Lane in Northampton, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and they're putting, I don't even think they're that far apart now as they come out with turn number four. And Austin Beers edges out Hirschman that time at the stripe for that second spot. But Hirschman continuing strong up on the outside with Savory sitting right there behind, ready for an opening to follow through. As they hit turns one and two, Savory gets all crossed up. He's got to back off the throttle, and Hirschman settles back into third. This is the part of the race that Matt Hirschman comes to life. 
20 laps to go. If Hirschman was saving anything, now he is up on that wheel and he is giving it his all. Savory settling back in. Kobe has come back to the front. And now Les Hinkley has worked his way into the top seven, bumping Woody Pitcap back to eight. Jake Johnson is nine. Joey Cipriano and Sammy Romo. Top eight cars running nose to tail down the back straightaway. Swanson enjoying a four car length advantage over Austin Beers. Hirschman about two car lengths behind them as they hit turns one and two. 84 wraps up on the board this time at the stripe. Can the Casella number 25 find itself in sign pro victory lane here tonight picking up the 18th annual Open Wheel Wednesday? Well, they continue to set a blistering pace. Meanwhile, Jake Johnson is starting to thread the needle and come back towards the front. He's all the way back up to the eighth position. And Doug Kobe has been trying everything to get around the 99 car of Richard Savory. And he just can't seem to find that opportunity or opening. If you look at timing and scoring, you will discover that Matt Hirschman's times are not getting quicker. No, they're not, and he is losing ground to the top, too. A lap ago, we watched Joey Cipriano and Woody Pitcap play tag down the front straightaway as they ran side by side. Both cars continue on. Pitcap gets that spot over Cipriano. A route is right there behind him with Sammy Ramo in tow. Ten laps to go for Matt Swanson, who is putting more breathing in between me and the rest of the field. He is running about a tenth of a second faster than everybody else right now. He actually is. 1.139 is the margin between first and second. And now it's 1.2. And I don't think there's any stopping that young man Austin Beers continues to set a blistering pace in second. Third position, still Matt Hirschman. Savory still in the fourth spot. Kobe is fifth. And then you've got Duceff. And then there's been that battle that's been going on between Les Hinkley and the yellow 06 and Jake Johnson. Now let's go a little further back of that. Cipriano, David and Root are all working over Woody Pitcap. And Woody's doing everything he can to keep them behind them. Five laps to go. And they are really pushing each other hard around the racetrack. Now up on the outside. Here comes Cipriano again. Woody throws it in at a ton. And they cling and they clang, but nobody's giving up an inch. No, we've got three laps to go, and Swanson has opened up over a half a straightaway lead over Austin Beers. There's the two-to-go signal as they come down into turns one and two. Matt Swanson all along trying to add his name to the winner's list of Open Wheel Wednesday. He's a third of a mile away. He certainly is, and well-deserving. The Casella, Mully's Machine, the young and talented Matt Swanson, David Roots car slides to the infield. Here comes the checker, and Matt Swanson picks up the 18th annual Open Wheel Wednesday $10,000 to win prize. Austin Bears second, Matt Hirschman third, Richard Savory fourth, and Doug Kobe rounds out the top five. In the sixth spot, unofficially is Ryan Doucette. Seventh position, the 06 of Les Hinckley. Eighth position, Jake Johnson, the number 15 Mass. Ninth position, Joey Cipriano, car number 51. And in the 10th position, Woody Pitcap, pretty good comeback. To celebrate with his team, we'll talk to him in just a moment. Micromanage? <laughs> Where's Gary? Hey, Gary! 
Matt, congratulations. Welcome to Signpo Victory Lane. Adding your name to Open Wheel Wednesday Rolls. How does that feel? It's unbelievable. I can't, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> this track has not always been the best for you. And tonight, early on, it looked like you were just going to ride around, get a good finish. But all of a sudden, this car came alive. Yeah, I mean, I knew as soon as we took this thing off the trailer that we had a shot. I think we all did. Uh, we just kept ourselves humble all day and just kept ma making it better and better. And man, I just can, I cannot say enough about every single one of these guys behind me. We were at the shop till 11 o'clock last night getting this race car done just to come here today. And man, I lost this one with about 10 to go last year. And I knew the second we unloaded today, we had a car to win. So just, I am at a loss for words. Over that last green flag run, your lead kept growing and growing and growing. Was your spotter keeping you abreast of what was going on behind you, how big of a lead you had, or was he just trying to keep you calm? Well, luckily my spotter is my father, so he, you know, everything to him is double. So I try and just keep, it, keep myself humble, kept myself calm. Gary chimed in over the radio with about 10 to go and just told me to keep doing what I was doing. And I, again, I just, I'm at a loss for it. This is unbelievable. I cannot thank every single one of these guys, Gary Casella, Molly, Sean, Charlie. Hang on, I gotta make sure I get everyone because Charlie gives me crap every time. Charlie, my brothers Taylor and Greg, Rob, Paul, Joby, Uncle Bernie, Uncle Bernie uh, John, Bob, both Sean's, uh, my little nephew Noah. I mean, just unbelievable. It was funny, my girlfriend told me last night that my win was coming and, you know, just had a special feeling waking up today. So just very thankful to be here. Uh, just can't thank Northeast Race Cars, Petty Racing Engines, um, you know, the doctor uh, for getting us straightened out with shocks, um, Hoosier Tire, Saravalo's Auto, Go With The Fly, Casella Snow Plows, Molly's Auto Repair, just everyone behind this whole deal, Arco Welding Supply, Jericho Transmissions, just unbelievable. Finally got that win here at Seekonk. Do you feel like you got the monkey off your back? I'm hoping so, man, because it's been a long time coming. Congratulations. Welcome to Sign Pro Victory Lane. How about a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? In Sign Pro Victory Lane for the Monaco Ford Tri-Track Modifieds, Matt Swanson.